All right, we are here, and I'd like to introduce you to Danger Dan. How's it going, Dan? <laughs> well, we're having fun at ZapCon. This is our second day, second to last day. We just did a seminar on uh, building custom games, and everybody, there isn't a pinhead I know that hasn't had a great idea for a game that they wanted to make, whether it's a, from a, a movie they liked, band they liked, or something simple, or like a racing game that was different or something. So, and it can be fun, and it can be, and you too can make a custom game. Definitely. A oh, jacket. wait, I got the jacket. This is the, this is the, the classic pinball jacket. So we got this wizard thing. So, oh, are you ready? There you go. Oh, so got this ready. Uh -oh. Is that up here? Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah, these are, uh, this is, there's, a, there's a big story behind the jackets, but that we're having cool. fun here, and um, I, uh, I like the, so like I said, we're going to do, well, I don't want to give it away, but something different. We'll wait for next yeah, year, and year. actually we're looking forward to it so we can check it out. It had a second level, okay? So here's a, here's a play feel from uh, WWF Wrestling or whatever, and, you know, it's kind of a nothing game, but the idea is, that, wow, I can take and make something really cool out of this. And see, so there was a basically a flipper here, three drop targets, and this loop shot. He once was talking about making a game that was a racing, drift racing. So, wow, here's, the, here's your drift loop right here. So the idea is you're, you're playing it, and you build your game um, out of some existing machine, and it has to be pre-alphanumeric and pre-speech so that you can just use the existing programming. So, uh, so here we are, have a second level. Now, here's the exact same play field that's been buffed off. So I can add my own graphics. So okay, so here he's got his flipper. This is your drift lane. This is your three drop targets, a kickback, whatever. And then you lose the ball here, here, and it feeds back to the main play field and stuff. So, and you're doing custom games, uh, it can be simple or complicated. There's this inverse rule though. The more complicated, the more complicated, the less likely you are to do it. Actually finish it. Talk is cheap. <laughs> That's why this game, the Edge, we built this for a radio station contest. And we did it in two weeks. And um, if it was any more hairy than this, it wouldn't have gotten done. Making handmade plastics to match the logo. Doing the Starry Night back glass, kind of cheap and dirty. But it worked. And, make, and using your creativity. And I like his idea about the drift game, because how many car racing games are out there? So he's going to take a ground shaker or a, a, another racing game, pre-digital, pre-alphanumeric, pre-speech. Oh, man, what these other ones? And uh, so see, and then you take what you've got. So, okay, this game was a sharpshooter. And so we said, okay, this originally spelled shooter. So I'm gonna change it to spell the edge. And oh, there's four bumper caps. So K-E-D-J, those are the call letters. And who? there's five rollovers. We'll spell radio. And uh, it's simple, it's silly, it's stupid. Uh, the spinner, there's a tower on one side and radio waves on the other. So when it spins, it looks like it's antenna. So, I mean, simple, but effective. And it was a neat idea. And uh, we didn't win, but hey, we made a custom game. And uh, you can too. That's the whole idea. It can be simple. So, and it can be fun. Uh, I got a question for you, Dan. Um, uh, how about Arduinos? Those are, that's the next wave. I, I actually, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, no, we were talking about the P Rock systems and, and this new programming. But again, there's a certain amount of programming that goes with it. And unless you get involved, but that's where your speech mods come from. That's where your lighting mods come from. That's where you can take and go past the limitations of the programming that's already there. There's a game called Paragon, and I'm working on. And, and we talk about finding what I call patio games, the ones you can buy on Craigslist for cheap because they've been left outside. And the cabinets are already roached, so it's not going to take anything. And then you're not going to feel bad trashing a crummy game. And let's take the layout. So here's a game called Paragon. So it's got, OK, Paragon, that's you know, seven letters. And what can I make out of seven letters? You know. So and then it spells this thing over here. And, and there's, well, so and I wanted to make a game called uh, Blade Runner from the movie. But I couldn't figure out what to spell in seven letters. Over here is four inline drop targets. Those, those, those are the four replicants. And, and you can do all this. So the idea is to, OK, you guys have a great idea. Now find a game to, that it'll fit on and then make it work. And if you do a game that doesn't spell, like he was talking about high speed. High speed is a great racing game, but it spells high speed. And it ruins your effect. But if you use a game that doesn't have speech and talk and say the wrong things, and it doesn't have alphanumerics, so it says the wrong things. You can use the existing game 
and then you use your Arduino to add the, 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 the lighting effects. Right. And you can get a P-Rock system and learn programming and even do dot matrix. And there's some great new development tools out there that you can modify Bally games, you can modify Williams games, and you can even take electromechanical pinballs, the score reel games, and change what's on the score reels. I took a, five, I took a game that had five score reels and put poker cards, 10 cards on each score reel. Mm -hmm. It was called pinball poker, and you're trying to make the best hand with five score reels, looking up all the time to see where you're at. Right. If I got three of a kind, bam, you slap the stop button, and, that, and you froze it, and then the next player had to beat your hand. See, with 52, 52 cards in a deck, 50 points on the score reels, so that was just this idea, throw away two cards. Uh, a lot of people don't like electromechanicals, but they're, they're good, they're simple. And maybe next year I'll finish Killer Bees and bring it to the show. Killer Bees, nice. Killer Bees. So. That's what the next question I was going to ask you. What's the next project you're doing? So. Well, uh, I don't want to give it away. I got, yeah, no, there'll be, every year, now that we're doing Pinball Rodeo again, thanks to ZapCon, we'll come up with a neat concept every year. Nice. So and it can be something simple, like like, uh, like like I did on Skateball, and putting little bitty flippers on it and calling it Tiny Flippers. Right. And making it, so a mod, or an update, or I mean, it can be elaborate like some of these I've seen, or it can be just something simple like a silly idea. So we'll have to wait till next year. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank looking you. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Right.